Hi everyone, today let's start off with the economic calendar, then we'll take a look at the charts, then we'll look at my results and my thoughts going into tomorrow's session. If you like trading stocks and options and making money, definitely like and subscribe. I make videos like this every single day that the markets are open, as well as Sunday, so make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Welcome to the Portfolio Bulletin. Let's get started. So looking at the economic calendar here just for a moment, we've been talking about this pretty much every video here, but I did want to highlight that factory orders came in much, much better than expected. The forecast was minus 1.8% from the previous at 1.8%. And then you can see here that the actual value here was 1.6%, so significantly better than expected. The economy continues to put out pretty good numbers. There's a lot of people that think a recession is coming, but we just haven't seen the statistics to support that yet. And that's why I think the markets are generally doing better than expected. Moving down, we talked about it yesterday. Jerome Powell talks to the Senate and then the House on Wednesday. And then, like I said, on the Sunday video, we have non-farm payrolls here on Friday. So big week of news coming up. But Jerome Powell tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern. And then he talks to the House at the same time on Wednesday. Moving over to the charts here on the 15 minute and the one hour on the S&P 500, you can see we did have kind of a top here. So we rallied up pretty aggressively, got all the way to around 407.40 through a couple of wicks through that level here. And you can see that's right in this previous zone, just short of filling the gap going back to Thursday the 16th. And you can see a zone of high volume right here, and that's where we ended. Couldn't get through here to the next zone of lower volume. There's certainly an area of support down here at 403. That's probably the price target that I'm looking for. It's worth noting here on the 15 minute chart, there's not a lot of volume through this area, some volume here at 401, but really it's been a strong push. And if we do break down through this trend line here at 403 tomorrow, you can see where it's sitting. If we do get through that level tomorrow, it might be a more substantial drop back down to the 144 EMA and 200 SMA here on the 15 minute chart. That would be right around that 400 level, which if you watch the Sunday video, you would know that is max pain for this week, which does seem like a probable close for the end of the week. Moving over to the NASDAQ, similar thesis. You can see this node of higher volume. That's right where we stopped here. This move down was very aggressive. We are in a short-term downtrend here on the 15-minute chart. Could certainly see a swing up maybe to 301, 302, somewhere in this zone, retesting the VWAP, currently sitting at 30150. 3156 back here, get a retest and then get the bigger sell off to this next lower zone sitting at 297 just about. That's probably what I'd be looking for tomorrow. If it does break 297, then we have a next lower zone looking for that same level here at the 144 EMA and 200 SMA sitting between 295 and 296. So Certainly a lot of downside potential, but we do have to understand the fact that we're below the 9, 21, and 55 EMAs here on the 15-minute chart, as well as VWAP, so short-term downtrend, but we did bounce off of the 1-hour 21 EMA here, so looking for that to break, then we're looking to move through that next area of lower volume down to 297. That'll likely be the bottom for tomorrow if we do continue this downtrend. If we do get a little bit of a rally, then I would be looking for a double top right at that 304 level. It's worth noting here that the NASDAQ did fill these gaps going back to that Thursday. The SPY couldn't quite do it, but the NASDAQ was a little bit stronger here and it did fill that gap and certainly could sell off from here. It's worth noting that if the SPY did not fill the gap and the NASDAQ did, the SPY might hold up the NASDAQ, wait and go fill that before we get the bigger sell-off. So keep that in mind. SPY has not quite filled, but the NASDAQ has. Moving over to the Russell and the Dow, you can see the Russell sold off significantly more than the major indices, which is interesting. Took out the entire previous day of bullish price action and filled the gap actually going back to Thursday. So that's interesting. Did look like it started to bounce here a little bit at the end of the session, which is also interesting. Didn't quite fill the gap going back to Thursday the 16th or Friday the 17th here, but it is in a zone of pretty strong support for the Russell. Could certainly bounce maybe into this 189.50 to 190. That would be interesting. Could correlate with a small bounce in the other major indices. Definitely keep an eye on that one. Moving over to the Dow here, actually posted a bullish day, but did come into resistance at that major trend line that we've been watching for a long time. 
and it did reject from there. Certainly could come up here and retest one more time at that 335.30 level, but then I would expect it to reject and probably come down and retest the 21 EMA somewhere around 333.60. This does seem like we're in a bit of a top here and you can see one hour momentum rolling over really strongly into bearish territory and you would expect that to continue into tomorrow's session. Moving over to Apple and Tesla here, what a difference. So Apple looking absolutely explosive, gapped up, rallied up, touched these previous highs, got rejection. So we're now looking at a potential rejection from their highs, looking like a potential double top. If this does roll over from here, take out this new midpoint that we have at 144, then we could be looking for a back down to the next low down here at 124. 50. Obviously, there will be some resistance in here, definitely some at 135.50 in this zone. But if we do take out this midpoint, that would be quite weak here on Apple. And we do have a potential turning point. Moving over to Tesla, not great at all. So did not gap up, went sideways and basically sold off throughout the session. Closed just above the support line at 193.50 that we've been watching for many weeks now. But it looks like after hours, we're slipping through that level. If we do get the candle break and continuation through there, then you're looking at support at the 144 EMA down here at probably 179.50, maybe 180. And if that happens, that's definitely going to pull the NASDAQ down quite strong. This is probably why the NASDAQ was underperforming the SPY here throughout most of the session. So keep an eye on Tesla. It's probably going to pull the NASDAQ down especially if we take out this next low here at 185.75, the bottom of this wick going back to Thursday from last week. Moving over to transports, similar thesis, gapped up, took out the day's high from yesterday, found rejection, sold off throughout the session. We're in an area of support here on the hourly. We have the 200 SMA sitting just below us. But of course, you have to look at this follow through on the four hour candles. Big wick, big follow through, definitely looks strong to the downside. We're below VWAP, sitting just at the nine EMA here. And you would think this will at least touch the 55 EMA, probably all the way down to the 21 EMA, sitting down here at 233. That's also a little bit of a note of some volume in here back to this previous consolidation. So that's what I'd be looking for. 233 seems like a good level for the next leg down here on transports. Like I said before, certainly could bounce a little bit from here, but I would definitely don't expect it to take out the most recent high. And I do think it'll sell off tomorrow, at least a little bit. Looking at the MACDs here, bearish on the hour, stepping down on the four hour, stepping down on RSI and bearish on RSI. So everything generally looks bearish on transports. Moving over to staples versus discretionary, similar thesis, staples holding up quite strong, looked very good here today, definitely what you want to see if you're going to see a sell-off, holding up above this high volume node, holding up at the 144 EMA, above VWAP, looks good, momentum fading here slightly, so keep an eye on that, but RSI looks strong, discretionary looks basically the opposite, we have a doji here, strong confirmation to the downside, below VWAP, below the 9 EMA on the hourly. RSI looks weak, momentum looks weak, and we did tag that area that we were watching just barely through a wick just through the edge of it, and as soon as we touched it, we sold off. So everything looks to more downside here for consumer discretionary, which means we are probably looking at a little bit of a risk-off move here. It's also worth noting we have an area of low volume all the way down to 143.70, so probably going to move pretty quickly through these next two points of downside. Look to fill the gap down at 143.25. It's probably what you need to look for here on discretionary. Moving over to semis, not a lot to add to the thesis here. You can see we came up to that most recent level of resistance that we were watching. Didn't quite tag it, but we did sell off from that zone. You can see we're right at the highs from the most recent consolidation and this high volume node here on both charts. If we break through that level, then we're looking at support all the way down at 236. So looking to either bounce now, retest, maybe get an overshoot, that would be interesting. But if it does continue to break down here, there's about 4 or $5 of downside potential before we find any real support, in my opinion. Might find a little bit of support at 240, but looking at this most recent downtrend line for that longer term support, you can see it's been very strong here through these four hour candles. All of the indicators down here look pretty bearish. Certainly potential for a bounce here on the four hour just slightly, but one hour RSI saying that we are going to move lower tomorrow. 
Moving over to yields, you can see here two year back in this previous consolidation zone did find a little bit of support going back to the highs from Tuesday. Looks like we might be making a lower high here though. So we'll see what that looks like. Probably consolidating between the 144 EMA and this most recent high. Otherwise, looking at the 10 year similar thesis broke down into this previous range, broke out of it just slightly here, kind of through a wick through the highs. It does look like we're selling off a little bit back into this previous range. Keep an eye on this one. Does look kind of weak here at the close, momentum ticking downwards. So that'll be interesting. Maybe yields cool off a little, give equities a little bounce early in the session, and then yields find some support and start to move higher, giving equities more room to the downside. Does kind of fit with the overall thesis. Moving over to the dollar, it's pretty much doing exactly what we thought it was going to do. Continues to downtrend here. We're looking at that 103.64 level as your next support. Maybe some support here at 103.85, but I expect to take out this most recent low. Does look like we're rolling over here again at the end of the session. Take out that low, come back into this most recent zone of support. Then we could see the dollar start to move higher from there. That's what I'm looking for based on this double top or top and lower high, however you want to look at it. Does look weak in the short term, but I do expect it to find some support back at this 103.64 level. Moving over to JNK, similar thesis, gapped up, rallied a little bit, sold off. We're at that next highest level of volume here on the hourly. We're at that next highest level of volume here on the hourly, 109.60, bounced off that level just slightly here at the end of day, but we're both a 9 EMA and VWAP here on the hourly, so it looks kind of weak in the short term. Momentum ticking down quite strongly. Does look like we're probably going to roll back over into this 91 17 zone back at the 21 and 55 EMAs here on the hourly chart. We do have the 200 SMA here on the four hour, which is interesting, sitting at 91.53 right now. Next candle, maybe a maybe a cent or two higher than we are right now. Momentum on the four hour still slightly bullish, but if we do get another leg down here back into this previous zone, then that could look a little bit more bearish. If we do get through that 200 SMA, then you're looking at the 9 EMA and VWAP sitting down here at 91.15, which does correlate with those previous EMAs that we talked about. Seems like we're going to get a little bit of a rollover, maybe find some support in that zone. You also have the 91 level that we've been watching for a while, certainly could tag that and then rally from there. That would be interesting, but right now, short term bearish here on JNK, and that does confirm the expected move for tomorrow as well. Looking at TLT here on the four hour and the daily chart, you can see we tagged that 102.50 level like we expected to, gapped up into it, overthrew it just slightly, and then sold off really aggressively back into this previous zone of volume. Certainly could bounce from where we are right now. This has been a pretty consistent consolidation for a couple of weeks now. Seems like somebody might be accumulating a position in this zone. Just some speculation there. VWAP on the daily chart sitting at 102.36. VWAP on the four hour sitting at 101. So trapped between the two VWAPs here. That's interesting. If we do get to push out of this 102.50 level, there's quite a bit of upside. The next two to four points have pretty low volume compared to this next zone of consolidation up here. And there's also lots of gaps in this down move looking to get filled. So keep an eye on this. Daily chart still looking like it's ready to roll over into bullish territory. Four hour chart looking like we're still consolidating in this zone. Finishing up with the charts here on the VIX, not a lot to highlight. Came up to the trend line, bounced off it, came back to the most recent low, found a little bit of support. So we basically consolidated on the day, which is interesting. If this does break out of this trend line tomorrow and we push up to the 55 EMA here on the hourly chart up around 1973, maybe 1965 by the time we get to it, that would be pretty interesting. Get a nice little bounce here on the VIX which would correlate with some lower prices on equities. It's worth noting that RSI here on the hourly chart does look slightly bullish. You also have bullish momentum, not very much, but a little bit. And then the four hour momentum rolling into the bullish side doesn't mean it can't step back down just like it did here, but it looks more likely to reverse based on this previous levels of support that we've been in. Looking for this four hour RSI to get above the SMA here, that would also be pretty helpful if we are going to move to the upside. But otherwise, we're still in a holding pattern here on the VIX. Moving over to my results, not great. So I was doing fairly well early in the session, had a nice little bullish move expected that to happen. And then that move down definitely was more violent than I thought. I did think we would roll over, but I didn't think it would be quite like that. 
Started to trade counter trend and that didn't work out really at all. Otherwise, looking at my IWM position, getting a sign at this 190 put. So my cost basis there is going to be 189.50. And then I collected a $1.85 credit to sell the stock here at $1.88. So just a slight profit potential here. I did trade this a little bit conservative because I do think there's a little bit more downside potential than there is upside. But I'll keep an eye on this, looking to wheel this stock here in my Roth position. Didn't pick up any positions on my individual account. I do think we're going to be pretty volatile going into tomorrow's session. Probably get a rally into the J-PAL speech. Probably going to sell off after the J-PAL speech. That's generally what I'm looking at. And I really just need to be a little bit more disciplined with my rules and following the trend. Let me know down in the comments section what you think of the charts or what you think J-PAL is going to say tomorrow. Otherwise, definitely like and subscribe if you got any value out of this video. Make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Of course, none of this is financial advice. This is all for entertainment purposes. Good luck in your trading and have a great day.